in the name of the Creator and the Redeemer and the Sanctifier. Amen. The grace of our Sovereign Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sin and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. God have mercy. God have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of our Creator God to intercede for us. God have mercy. God have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, and give all who for their faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor, through our sovereign Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing to the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but of the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, but not only the creation, but ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly while we await for our adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables. Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil 
and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Then the disciples came and asked Jesus, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to those who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The reason I speak to them in parables is that seeing they do not perceive, and hearing they do not listen, nor do they understand. With them indeed is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah that says, you will indeed listen, but never understand, and you will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes, so that they might look, not look with their eyes and listen with their ears, and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches them away and what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for that, as for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another 60, and in another 30. The gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the readings this week, we humans are viewed as earth people, whom God helps to grow from the ground up to the highest of heights. We must live generously, giving life, sustaining life, and caring for life. Life in all its forms, in all its colors, from the beginnings through the endings and extending that to the rest of creation as well. In the reading from Isaiah, God uses the ebb and flow of the seasons to show just how much God loves this planet and its inhabitants. In the second reading from Paul to the Romans, Paul talks about all creation groaning. Humans grown within, like a seed that opens up and pushes through that rough ground to become evolving, living trees. Creation is groaning and in agony. What are people doing to this planet? People are polluting the air and the water People are driving plants and animals to extinction. People are contributing in negative ways to climate change. People are minimizing a pandemic that is still surging. And in our country, we just got up to the 134,000 mark of those who have died of COVID-19 since 
early, since late February into early March. People are not practicing social distancing. Wearing a mask has become politicized. And on top of that, people are demeaning other people, disrespecting other people, spitting at people, brutalizing people to their death because they are different, because they are a perceived threat. People are shoving guns in other people's faces and threatening them. These are not pro-life stances. We are impoverishing, impoverishing this country and the world with all this stuff. And along comes Paul in Romans and says, we can share in the glorious life of the children of God. We can be that seed that opens up and pushes its way through that rough, tough ground into the sun's light to be born again, to be renewed, to be who God wants us to be. The Gospel according to Matthew describes parables as culturally based scenarios. Anyone who lived in those biblical times knew that the person who told a parable was telling a parable that had meaning beyond the obvious. And in this case, in this parable, Jesus is the sower. The word of God is the seed, and we are the ground. Now, we might be that path where the seeds were scattered and, and, and the, the soil was shallow and the birds ate them all up. We might be that rocky ground where the word of God is trying to get root, but it, it can't because our soil is too rocky. We might be that soil where the word of God takes root and starts to grow, but then all, we allow all these weeds to grow around us and it chokes us, chokes out the word of God. Or we might be that good soil where the word of God takes root and we grow in our faith and we flourish in Jesus' message of hope and peace and love for the world. But how do we get that good soil going? How do we do that? I think, first of all, look at the parable. Ask yourself, which ground am I in that parable? Maybe I'm the shallow ground. Maybe I'm the rocky ground. Maybe I'm the ground where I've allowed all the weeds to come up. Or maybe I am that good ground where God's word is taking root, and I'm learning more and maturing in my faith. Or maybe you, you know I was that rocky ground, or I was that shallow ground, and I've been pulling the weeds. Maybe you're that person who truly wants and desires that good soil. I think in cultivating that good soil, it starts with role models. People of faith in our lives who have made such an impact on us beyond anything we could have imagined. It also is about personal choice. Choosing to accept Jesus as your savior, choosing to accept the word of God to be planted within you, so that it grows and flourishes and you are walking with Jesus, deciding to commit to his mission here on earth and be cultivating the ground with Jesus. Okay, but how do we do that? <laughs> how do we cultivate that soil? once we've made the choice, once we've had those examples in our lives. I think any gardener will tell you that a beautiful garden with no weeds and great soil takes time, commitment, 
patience, <laughs> endurance, discernment, wisdom. It's the same for when you choose to plant the word of God within you and allow it, grow, allow it to grow. You have to commit to it, have time, pack your patience, and pray for wisdom and discernment. In addition, you commit to a healthier planet. In addition, is recognition. Recognizing personal sin and corporate sin. Sin as in racism, white privilege, sexism, ageism, religious bigotry, homophobia, transphobia, xenophobia, injustice, apathy, hate, silence. In addition, it takes respect for life. Respect for life as in black lives matter. Because if black lives don't matter, all those other lives in God's coat of many colors won't matter either. And in addition, it takes respect for the dignity of all human persons. And that respect needs to extend to being respectful of the dignity of the rest of creation. Yep, our four-legged friends, our four-legged critters, our multiple-legged centipedes, all creatures great and small. I'm still struggling with the hornets. God doesn't care as much about quantity as God cares about your life in growth in you, in you to come to fruition. Accept God's word and allow God's word to take root in you and grow. An understanding heart results in conversion. Conversion results in healing. Yes, healing of racial bias, healing of white privilege, healing of ageism, sexism, religious bigotry, healing of transphobia, homophobia, xenophobia, healing of injustice, hate, apathy, and silence. Hear the word. Understand the word. And internalize that word. Act on the word. Your challenge and my challenge is to walk that talk. Amen. I believe in God, the Father, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Lord Jesus, let us now pray for the needs 
of our world, our nation, and those of us who are gathered here and gathered with us virtually. The response to this evening's prayers of the faithful is, God, receive our prayer. God, receive our prayer. That our life together as a church and a dignity community may be rooted in the love and mercy of God, we pray. God, God receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. That the nations and peoples of the world may work together to protect and share justly the many gifts of God's creation, we pray. God, God receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer that those who suffer for the sake of what is right and just may find hope and inspiration in Christ the Redeemer, Redeemer we pray. God, God receive, receive our, our prayer. That we may truly see God in each and every person, especially in those whose views we find reprehensible or incomprehensible, we pray. God, God receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those members of our community and members of our families who are ill, who are in need of our prayers. We pray f especially for Karen, for Adam, Aggie, for Robert, for Charles and Edward, and for those others we now mention aloud by name. that the Holy Spirit be upon them and grant them full health and that God, they may guide their caregivers as well, we pray. God, God receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those in our community and in our lives who have passed away. We pray especially for the members of our community, Stephen Alderton, John Long, Father Frank Bober, Maurice LaPierre, we pray for all of those who have died uh, alone and quarantined. We, we pray for those who have died while traveling to this country to seek freedom. And we pray for all those others we mention aloud by name. May they find their home in the comfort of God's loving arms, we pray. God, God receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. And for what else shall we as a community pray? We pause now to lift up the prayers that you make in your homes. For all of these intentions, we pray, God, God receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Gracious God, you have heard our prayers and our cries out to you, and we ask you to hear our prayers, those of us gathered here and those of us gathered virtually, to hear our prayers and be at our sides. Amen. Amen.
us now in me. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O God, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ, our Sovereign Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Creator most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and our Redeemer, incarnate of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He took the bread and giving thanks, broke it. He took the bread and said to his disciples, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many so that sins will be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, O oh God, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, 
Remember, O oh God, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Wilton and Jean, our bishops, and all the clergy, both men and women, and all who work for justice and peace in a better world. Remember those who have died in the COVID-19 pandemic. Remember those who have died through brutality and grant that they who are united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you. For it is through Christ, with Christ and in Christ, O God, almighty creator, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor as yours forever and ever. And at our Savior's teaching, let us now pray the prayer Jesus Christ has taught us. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on your sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our God be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ. Amen. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O God, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ, our sovereign Lord. Amen. Our God be with you. And with your spirit. May almighty God bless you in the name of the creator and the redeemer and the sanctifier. Amen. The mass is ended. Go. Go forth and live the gospel and allow the word of God to grow within you. Thanks be to God.